What is going on guys? This is Brothers All Gaming and we're back now with my final review of today, which is going to be my favorite series, which is One Piece and of course we're doing chapter 713. Now this chapter kicks off where we left off last week, where we are at the meeting point where Law is supposed to transfer Caesar over to Joker, but of course, you know, we all we all found out that Doflamingo did, did not do anything that Law like told him that he had to do. So of course they have to make a new deal, but you know that now 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 that Joker has Law in his grasp in his grasp, there's no way that he that he gonna let him get away. So of course and of course now we have Fujitora which is which is the new admiral, he's there as well. And at first, when it, when they first showed him, I thought that he was coming after you know Doflamingo because he supposedly you know gave up his rank and his kingdom. So you would think that now he's a pirate again, that that the uh, the Marines would like would would want him again. But of course, you know it's not going down like that because I, I found out Doflamingo is a huge liar. He traded the entire world to the to the full law and the straw hats. And then we have the Marines, which which points out that that's Caesar Clown. But the, 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 but the thing is, even though that he is such a criminal, because he with Doflamingo, he gets a full pardon. So basically, all the crap that that Caesar has done, which includes that gas incident, that the whole thing with uh with Smiley, and of course making those kids the giants, all that stuff doesn't matter anymore, because he gets a full pardon, and that's kind of crazy. How Jay? Because you you work with a with, with a Shibukai, you don't you don't get in trouble for anything. But I think it goes like beyond more than just that. Jay, because I I don't think that Shibukai should have like that much power. But then again, Doflamingo so far is the only person that has subordinates that are so notorious. Because everybody else doesn't have anybody. Because Mihawk has those baboons, but they're on the island with him. Boa has her pirates, but they don't call trouble like this. And everybody else, I believe, are just solo. Well, not well. Buggy, I, I, I forgot about him. Now that he's a Shibukai. But I believe that if anybody in this crew get caught, uh, they'll they're probably getting a pardon as well. So yeah, like being a Shibukai is crazy, because you get so many benefits not only for yourself, but for for people that like work for you as well. But of course, not only did we did we learn that out, we actually we learned the name of the last new admiral, which I, which I'm not going to butcher the name and try to say it, but I'll just call him Green Bull. Now I cannot wait to see what what the Green Bull will look like and what he can do. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, Kizaru, who is still an admiral and personally my favorite, the, does not get the, the, the does not get left behind. In like terms of power, I definitely believe that Kizaru, I believe that his his fruit or power, definitely has room to like you know grow more, and that way all the emeralds can be on like you know, the uh the, the uh same playing field. So that way, it won't be, it won't be so imbalanced. But now, but now you see that Law had to make a choice here, either he can well, Joker wants him to lie because it makes sense. If, if he lies, then Luffy and them won't get in trouble. But for some reason, he like he actually keeps his word and, and says that they're in the line, which is kind of stupid. Because Luffy and them wouldn't have, wouldn't have to worry about the Marines if Law just lied. But for some reason, he like kept his word about that. I mean, I, I, I kind of respect Law for doing that. But at the same time, it's kind of stupid. Because why not just lie like Caesar even told you to do? So that way, Luffy can't get pardoned, just like he, just like Caesar did, because he he was Doflamingo. But now that but now that Law made a choice, Fujitora has no choice to attack. And you can see that in one panel, he unsheathed his sword, and something went into the air. I'm not sure what kind of ability. I'm not kind of. I'm not sure what kind of fruit did Fujitora eat. But it's amazing if he can make a freaking meteor fall from the sky. Now I'm pretty sure some of you are, are going to compare this to Naruto, where Madara did this, but it, but but the uh, the the fact that Fuj Fujihara can do this is just crazy. Because let's think about it: who else can you think in One Piece every now and meteor? Like I'm wondering if he had to like to me. 
I would think that Fujitora has, to, has some kind of gravity power, but I know that in, I believe, a strong world, uh, the, the villain Sheki or, yeah, or Shiki, whatever his name was, I believe he also had an, uh, a gravity proof ability as well, so it's kind of weird. I'm, I'm not sure if, if he's a meteor, a, a meteor, a meteor man, like, Fujitora could possibly be one, but, but at the same time, when he was first shown, he made some giant hole, and there was definitely no meteor coming down there. So I'm kind of curious as to like what kind of power does he have. But of course, everybody starts panicking. Everybody starts panicking because let's be honest, who who gonna stand there with a meteor coming down coming down at you? So now Law has to start using his stamina for for his fruit, and of course he uses room to, to make his area, and he cuts it with no problem at all. But then when he cuts it in half. One piece falls toward Doflamingo, and once again, he he did those wires of his, which are pretty awesome, to, to cut him into pieces. Now, that right there was, was pretty badass. And then, of course, you know, Fujitora, it, 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 it's gonna come down to him as well, but once again, he has that sword of his, and he, he shoots something out, and what do you know? It, it also got, it, it also, you know, got rid of those meteor pieces that, that, that were gonna fall on him. So of course now those regular Marines are safe. Caesar got the safety. I, I'm, I'm actually surprised that like Caesar didn't you know leave at all, because he's still there with the Marines. But I'm guessing now that because Doflamingo's there, he definitely doesn't doesn't want to leave aside because he doesn't know what can happen. But now that they dealt with the meteor, everybody like basically put their weapons away, and then you go to the next page and all you see is the ground beneath their feet is all that remains. That meteor was freaking huge, or it's because of the pieces that they, you know, cut up and stuff. It kind of like destroyed the ground, you know, around them. So it's just kind of crazy. But the, but the thing that it's like the, the most epic part about this chapter is Fujitora calling this part a, a test of ability. Now, if you call breaking down a meteor a test of your ability, then I wonder what else you can do. And that way, they went with a simple test. Like to me, that right, that right there was as simple. That right there was like god like amazing. Now I definitely think that Kizaru definitely has a competition when it comes to being my favorite admiral. Like don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm not going to man the Kizaru, but Fujitora is just coming like in this series strong, man. I I I'm really thinking his character. I think his whole concept is like it's pretty cool because he's a blind swordsman with a, a, an amazing power. But then, of course, we have to leave all that action to go to that toy and Frankie, which seem to have had, which seem to have stolen some fruit from from somebody that, that's like chasing them. So that that really wasn't too much. But it seems that they're talking to Sanji, and Sanji's kind of worried about Nami because they they uh feel like well no it's, it's, it's not that they feel but they know that the Don Quixote family is like targeting them. So I'm pretty sure somebody there at the ship. But Frankie, Frankie is relaxed because he has Brooke and Monster Chopper. Now I will say with Brooke there, there should like definitely be no problem. And Chopper definitely has like gotten a major character development now. He definitely now because he's not as weak as was before because he he can now control Monster Point, and he has Kung Fu Point, which have been really helpful to him. So I'm pretty sure that whoever on that ship they can handle. But of course, Sanji finally, Sanji finally sees Luffy is fighting, and of course, we all know Luffy is definitely going to win that block because there's no way that he's going to lose it unless somebody else move on that that could possibly get Ace Fruit. That would just not happening. So of course, we we see Sanji and Violet because Violet see that her that her men are coming, and Sanji really wanted to help her, and I I believe that really deep down, Violet could possibly join join the crew. Like to me right now, it's between her and Rebecca. And personally, I'm leaning toward more of Rebecca, but you never know. E even though that the Violet had to leave, you know, as a distraction, I'm I'm, I'm hoping that she actually gets to that rendezvous point that Sanji told her about, because normally, you know, when when a character runs off, and, and you have and you have all the people chasing after you, it, it's not gonna be a good thing, but. But uh, Violet, she has, she has the fruit, so you never know. She, she could probably take out those men once again. And of course, Kinemon, he, he, uh, he finally catch up to Sanji. 
And of course, those men are chasing after him. So yeah, he asked Sanji to deal with him because Kinemon definitely can't attack them because they're holding his friend hostages. So he, he probably feels that if he attacks them, they could kill his friends. So he gets Sanji, who I'm pretty sure they have no idea about him because I'm pretty sure they don't know that Kinemon was working with the with, with the uh, straw hats. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that there will be no consequences for this. But luckily, Kinemon and Sanji can now travel to the toy house, I believe. Yeah, toy house. Where, where I believe the uh, sad factory is, or whatever, whatever kind of factory that Don Flamingo has there, and they can also get Kinemon's friend. But I, I feel like there is definitely like more, more to Kinemon than than we know of right now. So hopefully, while they're getting there, we'll like learn more about them. But of course, after all that, we finally go back to Usopp or. Uso Land, I believe that that's the uh, name he, he's using right now for these dwarves and Robin. And of course, Usopp get all scared, but of course he calms down and lies, like always, telling him that that right there was his hockey, which we all know Usopp doesn't have, especially not, you know, not the uh, the Congregate one. There's no way that, he, that he'll have that. But of course, Usopp telling all these dwarves that he basically Luffy right now with all these stories. Like, in, in his story, he's Luffy. So of course he's lying to them, but... These doors are so gullible, they're believing everything that he says. So now, so now, uh, when Robin puts him about about his his, his new name, uh, Uso Lamb, U Usa points him into the, into the, the direction of the statue of Nolan, which 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 was the character that we saw in the Skypie art. Now that right there is just crazy that that Oda was able to make a reference. From from Skypia, which was so long ago, like over over possibly like three hundred chapters ago. I, I could be wrong there, but I want to say that possibly over three hundred chapters ago, he 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 managed to bring that back to to be relevant in, in today's chapter or yesterday's chapter, and and that's just crazy. But now these doors believe that Usopp is, is some is some like descendant of of Nolan. And of course, they want his help to bring down the, the, the Don Quixote family. And Usopp's face at the, at the end of the chapter is just so priceless. I freaking love his face because he, he knows that basically his lies have caught up with him. Now, this chapter, it, it was freaking amazing. I, I love the action. I love the comedy as well. And Usopp's face at the end, it was priceless. It just put the ice on the cake. And I, I, I think it's a chapter of 5 out of 5. Like, even though... One Piece, One Piece is my favorite series. I love the chapter of life. It was pretty awesome. I definitely can't, I can't wait to see what happened next week. Please, guys, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to like as well and subscribe. But until then, I will see you guys in my next review. You guys take it easy. I will see you all next time.